2023 is right around the corner and this is the perfect time to plan your next move. If you've been thinking about starting a DTF printing business, then you're in the right place. Because in this video, we're going to show you one full day here at Merch Studio and we're going to share supplies that we use, the systems that we have in place, and even our software. So grab that 2023 planner and watch this video. Let's make t-shirts. 5.38 in the morning. I'm going to have some coffee and then we're going to start the day. We have two ways that clients can order. One of them is through JotForm. I use JotForm for clients that already have their graphics design software and some background. People with their own gang sheets can just upload their gang sheets here. But we also have the designer in the website where you can set up your own gang sheet. So one thing that I don't like about JotForm sometimes is when you try to download the print files, when you try to download the print files, you go here, click on download, and you download the attachments, and it sends it to your email. And I would be okay with the extra steps if it did take a while for the files to get sent to my email. It's not a perfect system. It's working right now. We're trying to find ways to streamline that downloading process. Deco Network is so much easier to work with. And if you want me to do a tutorial on Deco Network, we can do that and even JotForm. But let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see on my Deco Network back end to see how I you know, get the files. The great thing about the way that our computers are set up is they're all networked in a folder. So I can work on files here. And as files come in throughout the day, I can keep adding them to the print list. So this is the first printer that we got. It's an oddly two print head printer and it prints about 25 linear feet per hour. And so we set this one up first and if we need to, then we fire up this bigger monster right here. This one is the Auric or Raptor 2 as they call it on ETF Superstore where we got it. So this is the dryer that comes with it. The oven part of the dryer is longer because this thing, uh, this thing prints 50 feet an hour. So we normally do this at night before closing up shop, but you know, yesterday was a long day, super exhausting. But even though our print list for today is a little short, we still have a few files that we need to print from yesterday. Remember that shared folder that we set up in the other computer? So you can find it in this same computer. See there, that's our print list for today, which I created in the other folder or in the other computer. And you'll also be able to find that here on this computer and on that one. Is it good? No, please not. You gotta do it again? What, what do you need to do now? Marianne here cleaned the printhead twice and it's working perfectly. We are now printing. See there? These are our temperature. If the cleaning didn't work, what we would do is under setting, we would loading, which is we're gonna flood the print uh, the printhead and flush out the old ink. So the colored inks all go there and there will be waste just from thrown away. But the white ink you can recycle back. So we catch it in a different bottle that we can mix together with the new ink and that should work pretty fast. So now we're going to turn on the dryer. We have that main switch over there. Then we have the plate and the oven switch. This middle one is static switch, which uh, eliminates static electricity, which leads to a powder clean to your film. So we don't turn that on unless we need to. And you also have some other buttons there. This one is for the shaker. No, this is for the, yeah, this one's for the shaker, right? That's for the shaker. That one's for the powder distribution. This one is for the fans at the end here to pull the film down. All right, so we're gonna leave her to print 
the rest of the files for the day and we will come back later for quality control and packing and shipping in the meantime i'm going to go back to the computer and work on some files and you know other computer stuff that needs to get done. time for a month So I'm pretty much done with the computer work for the morning. I'm just going to keep on monitoring it for rush orders that come in during the day. But we will check on Marianne to see how she's doing. Ma? Oh, how are you doing? Ma? Hello. Check this out. Good to go. All right, still a slow morning. It, all, uh, it usually picks up around after lunch. It gets crazy. And we'll see if that happens today too. I hope not. It's a Friday. I want to just chill for a little bit, but you know, we got to do what we got to do. It's currently 1.16 in the afternoon and as expected, this was our print list this morning. We do 25 feet per hour uh, maximum. Matt, you good with uh, four hours more? Yeah. Right, so we should be done at about 5, 5.30ish if no more orders come in. If they do, we're going to be printing for a little bit longer than that, but we're going to get these uh, shipped out by 7 p.m. Because 7 p.m. is the time that UPS closes. So we're now in the last stage of production, which is processing the shipping. So we're gonna, we're gonna buy the shipping label. And to do that, we need to first weigh it and like so. Then using ShipStation, which is integrated into our system, we just find their order. And if it's a job form order, if it's one of those uh, orders where the gang sheet is just a batch, and we go to job form, find the order, or and see what kind of shipping they are requesting for. So in this case, this is three day shipping. And once we've purchased it, we can print out with this label printer. Uh, we never have to refill it or do any of that. All right, now once we have that, we just stick that label on there, like so. Boom. And then Super Mom side right here tapes it up, and we are good to go. All right, that's package number one for today. We got a few more. Okay, so aside from that shipping label, we also need a customs form for Canada. That way, the shipment does not get held back in customs. Uh, one thing you need to know about Canada shipments is there's two ways that your client can get this delivered. Number one, they can go to a customs broker, which will charge them just about, I'd say 70 to 80%, maybe more, maybe a little bit less for processing their customs form for them. Or if they have a customs office that's close by, they can just go over there, pay for the customs fees, which should be minimal, uh, nowhere close to uh, the cost of the transfers at all. And just process it themselves and not have to pay for a broker. So we need to sign it and date so that the customs office knows what this is or what's contained in it. Okay, so now we're gonna stick this on here. Uh, once UPS Canada receives this, we just take it off, take the form, they have it on file and they just let it through. All right, so we are in done packing up the last package of the day. We have 10 boxes. There should be 11. Still have another 60 feet that we need to print just because we started printing it out and some of the some of the images had some ghosting. Uh, this one thing that we do that other DTF companies don't. Uh, we, you know, when we print and we see something wrong with your transfers, our customer service email you and we make sure that your prints are the way that they're supposed to be. If there's something that you need to change or uh, that you need to remove from your transfers, you know, you can send us the correct gang sheet and we will print those for you. All right, so we are done for the day. It is for the first time 5.45 and we're here. This will take about five -ish minutes. All right, that is a full, unhectic day of UCF printing here in Merch Studio. It's a Friday, tomorrow's a chill day, and we are off.